We are live. Happy Thursday, y'all. My name is Chef Daniela Malfitano, and welcome to Plant Based Made Easy. You are in my studio, in my kitchen, and I want to welcome you to the space. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and for every day before. If you've joined us in the past, I appreciate your support. You guys, it's been such a fun four weeks doing these live cooking streams. And if you're new, I want to welcome you, especially because you're new and tell you exactly what this is. Every single day I cook something very simple, really easy. And uh, I teach you that food can be fun and approachable. That's what Plant Based Made, Made Easy is all about. So today we have something really special. Um, we are going to be actually making a seasonal vegetable. One of my favorites, the Italian Mighty radicchio. Now this is an intimidating vegetable and I think I'm going to get right into it and I'm going to talk a lot as we go on. Okay. If you have any questions as we are cooking, just write them in the comment box because I can see who's here and I can see if questions come up and I want to engage with you. I want to help you understand that you can feel competent and confident in the kitchen with just a few easy ingredients and recipes under your belt. Um, and here we go. I'm going to make a pan grilled radicchio with a sun dried tomato salsa. Now, I hope that sounds really good to you. It sounds delicious to me. Uh, it is noon where I am in California. Um, if you are all over the United States, maybe this is uh, more of a dinner. Maybe this is um, uh, going to help you uh, with a snack if you want something quick and easy, but super fresh. Um, and here we go. All right, radicchio, right? This is a wonderful purple, but bitter vegetable. It's of the chicory family. And and usually comes in a small head like this. Oftentimes people will mistake it for cabbage, but it's not cabbage. It's similar to it, but it has much more of a chicory or bitter flavor. But the cool thing about this vegetable is that when you grill it, it actually becomes sweeter. And we're gonna actually tenderize it a little bit too um, by putting it on that grill. It's gonna wilt away and caramelize just a bit. Um, and then we're gonna top it with this delicious, very balanced, full flavor salsa. And the salsa will consist of a few really important ingredients, um, most importantly, sun dried tomatoes, which I love. Now, these are such a super food, and I'll explain once we get into it. But I'm also going to add to our salsa uh, shallot, um, some beautiful capers. If you don't know what those are, I'll explain. And then some nuts, because I want to make this really balanced. So we're going to use walnuts today. And this is the first thing that we're going to start out with. So I have some California walnuts, and I'm going to get my pan on a nice medium high heat. Now, if you are whole food plant-based and you follow a strict no oil, no salt, no sugar guideline for your diet, then you can actually remove the oil from this recipe altogether and replace it with water. That would be just fine. However, I just want to encourage you to remember, um, and myself, I'm going to say this to myself as I say it to you, that we can eat small amounts of sugar, oil, and salt in moderation. That's the only thing of the whole food plant-based kingdom that we really want to enjoy in moderation because there's they're not really technically whole foods. Um, today we're gonna use extra virgin olive oil and I'm gonna show you that this is the extra virgin olive oil. It has a kind of a darker color and this is a neutral oil, avocado oil. Now, both of these oils, while they come from whole foods, this one comes from oil, this one comes from olives, this one comes from avocado. It's actually processed, as we know, um, because the, uh, I don't see any olives in here, right? This is not the whole fruit at all. And so because it's not the whole fruit and we've extracted part of it, it's no longer a whole ingredient. And therefore we wanna enjoy it in moderation. But anything else of the whole foods of the plant-based world, we can eat ad libitum. I love this word. It's my new favorite word. And I've recently learned it from Dr. Michael Greger, who's an amazing doctor and author who wrote the book, How Not to Die. I really highly recommend you read it if you haven't. So I'm just going to start with a little extra virgin olive oil. And for me, I'm just going to use a teaspoon or two. That's it. That's not a lot at all. Just kind of like get the pan um, oiled, right? You have it right here, right next to me. Now for our walnuts, I want about a third of a cup. And these are halves, halves, walnut halves, which are really, really great for snacking. But for a salsa, I think I'm gonna take my chef's knife, I'm gonna run my knife over it. Now I like this recipe a lot because it's one of these like gourmet looking recipes that doesn't take very much time at all. And it's really seasonal. It's really perfect for summertime. We're gonna use the grill here shortly to grill up the radicchio. And the sun-dried tomatoes, the walnuts, um, the garlic, even the, the capers and the shallots kind of scream summertime salsa to me. Um, so I love this a lot. I think it's really, really delicious. I think you're gonna like it too. So I'm gonna take my walnuts. They're chopped now, as you can see. I'm gonna throw them right into my oil. And I'm just gonna let these 
get nice and toasty. I want all of it, every bit of this walnut dust. And I'm going to use a heat resistant spatula for this. I really, really like these a lot. They can go um, very up to a very high heat, up to 550 degrees, and they will not melt. So I appreciate that. And I always use um, the silicone nonstick for my cookware, on my cookware, as I'm um, cooking with it so that it doesn't scrape my pans and pots. Now, this is only going to take just a second. I'm going to keep my eye on it, but I just want to kind of like make sure that it is covered or coated in the oil just slightly. That's gonna help it uh, crisp up, get nice and toasty pretty quickly. If you're going to use water for this recipe instead of oil, for this part, you can actually just use the nuts in a dry pan. But when we make our salsa, then you can actually use, replace the, the oil for the water. But for this, you can just dry, uh, toast your nuts right in a dry pan and that would be fine. All right, so now let's talk about the salsa. Let's start that right here in my food processor. So I have my mini food processor. Um, and to this, I'm going to add really important ingredients that are uh, flavor agents. This is going to like where really be where all of that excitement um, and that uh, kind of like tomatoey, oniony, garlic flavor is going to be held and contained. So the first thing that we want is uh, I want one clove of garlic. So I'm going to just pull it off this head, and I, I'm going to get a small clove. I don't really need anything big. My radicchio is quite small, and so I'm going to make a small portion of this. Oopsie. I'm going to grab my garlic clove. I'm going to place it down on my cutting board right here, and then just kind of give it a light whack. And what I've done is removed the skin. By giving it a light, light whack, um, what you end up pulling off is just the paper skin. Really simple. Perfect. And this can go right in. I'm going to throw everything in my mini food processor. If you have a food chopper, if you have a pestle and mortar, mortar that could also work just fine. But I like the food processors because it's going to like be a couple spins around the blade and it is done. All right. I think I need to whack this a little bit more, just slightly. Nana said, whack it good. I can't, can't forget that. Thanks for the reminder, Nana. All right. That put that right in. Um, now we need a, a tablespoon of shallot. Now I'm going to use this big whopping shallot here. Um, it's quite big, so I'm not going to use the whole thing. There we go. My walnut pan turned off. There we go. So we have the shallot. Now this is beautiful. This is wonderful right now. This time of year, you can use shallots raw. You can put them in dressings truly any time of year, but they're in particular, they're really, really great during the summer months. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just slice the whole thing in half. I only need half. And, and then I'm going to cut the top and the bottom off and remove that outer layer. And then I'm just going to help out the food processor here. Just going to give it like a quick run through with my knife. And why am I doing this? If I'm going to slice it, dice it and slice it and chop it away in the food processor, just so that everything will kind of come together um, more quickly and efficiently um, within this blade. I want to make sure that everything blends well together and, and gets to the right size that's even and consistently even. All right. Now, we also want um, some capers for this. So I'm going to use these beautiful capers in brine. If you've never used capers, take a look at this. Um, these are wonderful, really kind of salty, briny. Um, they sort of taste like mini little tiny olives, but they're not. They actually come from flowers, and this is um, wonderful. They are kind of like the wonderful little, how do you describe it? Like a chewy, kind of fibrous, um, and kind of like salty. Mm. They kind of taste like, yeah, like an anchovy, but it's not. It's a plant, right? So it's kind of nice. It's very salty. Mm. Like wakes you up. So good. I'm going to use as much as you want, really, truly, for this. I think I'm going to use about three full tablespoons, which is everything I have right here. And I'm not going to use that brine liquid. I'll take the brine liquid out. Now, this spoon is not a tablespoon, so don't you worry. But about three tablespoons in total. Did you get a little bit of that brine liquid in the mixture? That's totally fine. No fret. And then... Of course, I want some EVOO extra virgin olive oil. This is where you would use water instead if you don't want oil in your salsa. I'm going to use about um, a couple tablespoons, like three to five tablespoons, kind of depending. One, two, three. That's great. I will add more later if needed, okay? Now, last but certainly not least for this run, um, I'm going to add sun-dried tomatoes. Now, these are packed 
in oil, in olive oil to be specific. So these are also going to add a little bit of that oily, fatty richness, which is great. However, here's another modification for all you whole food, plant-based people that are really, really specific about not eating any oil whatsoever or very, very little. If you wanted, you could use sun-dried tomatoes. You can get sun-dried tomatoes that are packed, that are dry packed, not in oil. So I'm going to open up this jar here. And again, three to five tablespoons. This is totally up to you. You don't want to remove that much oil from this. So just kind of like scoop the tomatoes out. That's like one and a half tablespoons. And here's another one and a half tablespoons. That's perfect. Now, the cool thing about the oil pack, sun-dried tomatoes, is that once you're done with all these sun-dried tomatoes and you've used everything except for not the oil, the oil will remain in the jar. And then I make a delicious kind of like sun-dried tomato essence dressing or marinade. And I do this every single time with every jar of sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil because it has that delicious, like antioxidant rich, lycopene, tomato-y flavor that's unbelievable. And you definitely want to get into that um, because it's it's so great for you. Um, it's so yummy. Sun-dried tomatoes are definitely made here in California for the most part um, at Morningstar Farm farms, which is happens to be in um, Northern California, and about 90% of all sun-dried tomatoes are actually manufactured right here in the state of California. Um, I know that because I did an episode on sun-dried tomatoes back in my day on PBS when I had delicious discoveries, and that was really fun to do. Um, I think that was one of the most interesting uh, ingredients that we sourced and we worked with and we uh, featured on the show. All right, so these nuts are done. I'm going to show you, oh my gosh, I wish you were here because truly all of a sudden I just got hit with this beautiful walnutty, toasty walnutty uh, scent. Now these look great. You can tell they're just slightly browned. They're just uh, warmed up. The oil has been released into the pan, that natural walnut oil. This looks fantastic. I'm just going to move it to the side and I'm going to replace my pan with my grill pan here and I'm going to get this nice and hot and I want this to just work, all right? So coming back as this grill pan's getting nice and hot, let me just start this. I'll chop this together to make sure that it kind of like comes together before we add our green ingredients, which I'll get here in a second. So let me just do a couple pulses. Here we go, chop, 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 chop. Five pulses, and what you end up with is everything is starting to come together nicely in the blade. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Kind of look at this, right? It's not quite cho chopped up enough, but just everything has been incorporated into the blade enough. Now let me grab my parsley, because that's the last ingredient for my salsa. And I think I'll grab some microgreens while I'm at it. Cool. All right, so I have my parsley here. Yes, I keep my herbs in a vase and this is my herb vase. Now, if you've been with me, uh, let me just remind you, and if this is the first time you're here with me, let me share my trip trick with you. This is how I hold fresh cut soft herbs. Now, soft herbs like to be held just like flowers. And so think about basil, cilantro, parsley, all of these are soft herbs and they will do really well in a vase with a little bit of water that you change out every day and you can hold this in your refrigerator. These herbs will last you anywhere between four, five, six weeks I've held herbs. Um, this bunch here is almost, I think, four weeks old now. And can you believe it? Look how green it is and vibrant it is. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna grab some delicious organically grown parsley. Now I have here the rest of the parsley. I'll use a lot of the tops. Um, but I'm gonna use the tops as well as the bottom, the stems and the leaves. I'm gonna remove the very base, the woody ends. This can go right into my compost, okay? What about spinach? Should we keep that in a vase? Great question, Danny. Thank you so much. Yeah, spinach is also a green. It can be kept in a vase, although I don't know if spinach and herbs like to play together. So you can act absolutely hold spinach in a little tiny bit of water on its own in a vase in your refrigerator. Remember, very important to then change out the water, even more so for spinach than for herbs, to make sure you're diligently changing out that water daily. But I wouldn't actually blend spinach and herbs together in the same vase. I don't think that they they blend, they, they, don't, they don't sit well together in that vase. So um, you can absolutely have one for spinach and one for herbs. All right, we're gonna use about a cup of this parsley here. And I've got the, the tender stems on the base as well as the leaves. I'll throw this right in. Now kind of like position it around that blade. 
Let me just check this. This is getting nice and hot. All right, so now the parsley's in. Give it a little chop and get this salsa complete. I love these mini food processors because they're so handy. They're so easy to kind of use whenever you need it. Right here for you guys. So the cool thing is you can go one way or the other way. Oh, this looks great. Perfect. I'm just gonna stop this and kind of just make sure that the last of the parsley is getting spun in this blade. Everything's looking nice and chunky. And you can see I'm pulsing this. I want to keep it chunky. It's really nice when it is. You can add more water if needed or a little bit more oil if needed if you want to actually make it a little looser. And I do, maybe a tablespoon more. Notice I haven't added any salt. The capers are salty enough. Cool. This looks great. And you can keep going as, as much as you want. You can make this kind of like a really kind of fine chunk. You can keep it like a coarse chunk. It's totally your preference. For me, I really like rustic cooking. I don't like things too refined. I don't like my food refined either. <laughs> I like things just pure the way that they are, right? So I'm going to get it chunky-ish. I think this looks fantastic. Maybe one more spin around this really sharp blade. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna just try this. I'm really just gonna kind of taste to make sure that it, it feels balanced to me. Oh, wow. Mm. It's so bright. Mm. It's really good. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. Now, we have to grill up our radicchio, the fun part. Here we go. If you wanted to, you could use any other type of chicory as well. So know that you could actually use any other kind of um, wonderful grilling bitter green um, or vegetable that you want. So this is radicchio, it is a bulb. I, what I wanna do is create um, four equal wedges. When you slice open to in, into it, you will see that core is there. You want to keep that core intact because that's going to help it stay on the grill. And then at this point, you can actually put it directly right on the pan. Uh, the grill pan needs to be really super duper hot. Um, you can also give it a little bit of oil. Now, I'm not going to just go for it and pour it right on. I'm going to pour it into this small cup next to me this little tiny bowl, and then I'm gonna pastry brush it. What's happening here? There we go, there was a little air pocket. So I'm just gonna use like a couple teaspoons pastry brush, really important. Get yourself one of these using a real pastry brush. And literally, you're just gonna paint. This is great for kids, paint it with a little oil. You wouldn't wanna do this with water, but if you are um, going to be doing this recipe without oil, what you could do here instead of the oil is you could actually just season this with um, some you know salt if you're using salt or some dried kelp which is usually the uh the substitute for people that don't have salt and that is enough you could sprinkle in it with a little bit of the seasoning and you will actually have an amazing um delicious kind of wilted browned radicchio in the same way without any of that oil of course it's not going to work as well because the oil and that fat barrier and the grill are going to work together and create nice beautiful grill marks but here we go right on as soon as it hits the grill, it starts to sing. Can you guys hear that? Yeah, I'll get closer. All right, it's singing. This is gonna just take a few minutes per side and I'm really gonna be pretty diligent. I'm gonna get the overhead cam just on its own. I'm gonna just like really use my fingers and my palm, my hand weight to pull, push down this radicchio. Now I have this on a pretty high heat because I wanted it to come up to temp. I think I want it even just a little bit higher. Yeah, that's right, perfect. All right, so you guys, this is gonna take a few minutes. Like I said, your salsa's done. Um, I wanna show you this really cool graphic. 
because you know me, I'm such a nutrition nerd. I pulled this for you. I thought you'd find it interesting. It's really kind of fun to learn about the health benefits of some of these ingredients that we love so much, right? So here we go. You guys can see this. Here's radicchio. Now, I love radicchio because of its purple color and this graphic just caught my eye because everything is this gorgeous purple color. So I just wanted to share a few amazing points about radicchio. Um, this beautiful looking vegetable is a type of chicory, like I mentioned, with a slightly bitter taste. Um, and it will actually get sweeter on the grill, but that spicy flavor will always be within the vegetable. So that spicy flavor is not going to go anywhere. When I say spice, I don't mean like heat. I just mean it's going to have like a little bit of that, um, you know, that bitter spice that's left over. But the, the grill is going to help to balance that out with some caramelized grill marks and some sweetness. Um, it has been around since the Roman times, which is something new that I learned, with Pliny the Elder reporting that it was the Egyptians who bred radicchio from chicory. Pretty cool. Now, a handful of radicchio, which is one of the quarters that I'm grilling up right now, has 110% of your recommended daily amount of vitamin K. Now, vitamin K is a very important vitamin. Um, it helps for uh, blood clotting in the blood system. It plays a key role in bone health as well. Um, and there are two types of vitamin K, one and two. Radicchio has both in abundance. And it also is full of phytochemicals. One of the things that I often talk about in my online cooking club and all of my live cooking lessons and in my uh, programs in the past is the phytochemicals. These properties are antioxidant, very, very powerful antioxidant properties that are usually found in very highly pigmented vegetables and fruits. So radicchio is certainly one of those. So that's my little fun fact about radicchio. Obviously, you can see at the very end here, it says you can use this raw in salads. You can put it in soup as well because it holds up. And you can also grill it. So it's perfect for the summertime grill, which is why I'm showcasing it today. All right, so this is looking great. I'm now going to flip it. I wanna take a moment to talk to you about the Plant-Based Made Easy Online Cooking Club starting very soon, starting on Monday. I'm very excited to share this with you. Now, I really wanna personally invite you to join us. The Plant-Based Made Easy Online Cooking Club is a really fun community of people that gather every single week um, and gather throughout the months to really be healthy with one another. Now, what I do and how I contribute is I provide weekly recipes, grocery lists, personalized health coaching um, over Zoom in a group setting. Also, uh, amazing plant-based education. So we really get into why consider going plant-based right now and how, how to make it fun. So this program, this course, this online club, I should say that, is really, really super easy to join. We've made it very simple for you to join. We recently created by recent, I mean like very recently. I'm so excited for you to take a look. This new link, go to bit.ly forward slash plant-based made easy. You can find more information on the program, including all of the categories of um, menu items that I'm gonna be featuring. So we go through breakfast, lunch, dinner, sweets, snacks, and staples. I've added that whole new category of staples this month, which is things like plant-based milk and better yogurt, plant-based cheese and, and bread, things that are really important to know how to prepare on your own. So I hope that you'll consider joining me for that, you guys. There are only a few more seats left for this experience. I've opened it up for um, a small group. I've decided 12 participants for this month, and we already have a few people signed up. So if you'd like to be one of those people that join our group, please consider joining. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever too, you can ask myself or Danny. You can um, either email us or send us a little message. And then if you haven't done so already, join our Plant-Based Made Easy Facebook group. This is a free, amazing community of people here on Facebook. Um, and we want to include you in that. This is a place where we talk about all things plant-based, how to make it fun, approachable, and um, how to talk about all those barriers for going plant-based and why um, it's important to be in community. I know I mentioned this already that some, sometime this week, but there's really a big difference between vegan and plant-based. And that big difference, which is a, a question that I, I get very often, is you know, veganism is the act of not eating any animal products, um, also not having or using any animal products on your body for your bath, your your goods, like your shower goods, your bathroom goods, and all that, uh, your bath products, but also not wearing anything like leather. Well, the thing about plant-based is we, we we sort of meet all of those needs as well. We don't eat any animal products. We don't 
don't use any animal products whatsoever. But the whole difference between vegan and plant-based is that plant-based really focuses around eating whole plant foods and really enjoying um, a dietary theory without restriction. And so I've, I've just recently talked about ad libitum and eating without restriction. That's the Latin word for eating uh, to, to your heart's desire, right? Um, but the cool thing about plant-based is you really can. Whereas vegan, you can sometimes still, you know, get get stuck in eating junk food on a vegan diet. And so there's really big difference. Although I would say that probably most people that are vegan are um, pretty conscious about what they're eating. So hopefully they're not sitting there eating, you know, vegan donuts all day long. But there is a quite quite a big difference between these two. Um, and I think a lot more vegan people are um, starting to see that you want to eat, uh, you want to treat whole foods as whole foods and make those the uh, majority of your diet as well. All right, so this looks great. This radicchio is fantastic. It's looking really grilled. I want to show you one in the camera. I'm going to just kind of pull it up, right? You can kind of see it starts to get a little wilty. It starts to get a little blackened. You don't really even need to take this very far. Like I said, you're just kind of warming it through. If you've ever actually cooked greens on the grill before, you know it doesn't take a lot. And that's it. Great. Let me grab my platter and we will plate this up. Actually, I think I'm going to use this one. Yeah. All right. So I've got my platter here. Chef's trick. You have to wipe it down first. And then I'm going to do this salsa on the base. I'm going to do a big mound of this salsa on the base. And really, I'm just making like a... a a place for the radicchio to sit. That looks beautiful. That does too. Place this right on, on the plate, right over the salsa. I think I'll place this one right this way. Now this is definitely a knife and fork situation for sure. I'm gonna remove the rest from the grill just so that they don't burn. Place them here. And I also want some of those walnuts. All right, so I have these toasted walnuts that we made earlier. I'm just gonna like really sprinkle these over. It's gonna be a really chunky, very super flavorful dish. Clear my decks here. Now I, you can also serve this with a little uh, lemon wedge, which I really like to serve radicchio with uh, lemon, lime, or grapefruit or orange. Um, it's a really wonderful, I think it's the Italian way, wonderful way to sort of accentuate um, all of those wonderful kind of chicory flavors. I'm just gonna grab a, a delicious a lemon cheek, cutting it in half, place one down, use another. Here we go. Yeah, give this juice an opportunity to hit every bit of this radicchio. That looks fantastic. And then last but not least, I think for some green, which is so important to use green, I'm gonna use some microgreens. Now I'm growing microgreens. These are radish greens. I have wheatgrass. I have a bunch of different arugula greens, um, lots of different stuff. I'm gonna bring you guys back into my garden soon so you can see all that's coming together, all that's growing really well in my soil. For right now, I'm gonna just take some of these beautiful tender greens. These microgreens are gonna be placed down on the radicchio, kind of wherever they'll fall. And there you have it, a pan grilled radicchio with a sun dried tomato salsa. It has never looked better. This is really a great summer dish. I hope that you'll enjoy it. I hope that you'll try it. Let me know how it tastes. Let me know how your kids and your family like it too. If you do make this, will you take a photo and will you do the hashtag plant-based made easy and you can actually post it on Chef Daniela Malfitano or better yet, inside the plant-based made easy Facebook group. Um, I hope that you like this one. Woody, thanks for the question. Thank you. Woody says, it looks tasty. I've never had it plated like that. It tends to be bitter. So it's nice knowing giving it a little char will sweeten it up. Getting it a little char, giving it some love, some heat on the grill will really sweeten anything up. So that's a really good thing to remember when you can take any of these bitter greens, even like romaine lettuce, keep it really long, make sure it's really cold and kept vibrant until you get it on the grill. And then just let it sit on that grill for a couple of minutes like you saw. And it really like, it changes the whole thing. So it's one of these ingredients that super duper changes with just a little heat. Um, and it's a knife and fork 
unctuous, delicious, amazing plant-based plate right here. So Woody, try this and let us know what you think. You guys, make it really, really healthy too. You can actually use any ingredients that you want. If you don't like sun-dried tomatoes, choose something else. Another great option would be Kalamata olives. And you can also add sweetness to this by adding, if you wanted some like uh, dried blueberries would be fantastic with radicchio. Some like wild dried blueberries that would add a sweetness, but also a tartness that would sing well with this. Um, so yeah, make it your own. And I think I need to give it a taste, yeah? Yeah, let me grab a knife and fork. Yeah. I, I don't wanna mess this up, it's too gorgeous. I'll do this one. I'm gonna do this right here on the, the cutting board. I'm gonna do it chef style where I'm just gonna like take my, I guess I don't need my butter knife. <laughs> All right, here we go. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, right? A little bit of the salsa, bite. Mm. Oh my gosh, mm. it's so yummy. Oh, the sun-dried tomatoes are perfect because it adds that sweetness, that sweet element. Like I mentioned, the blueberries would be really great here. The sun-dried tomatoes do that well. Um, yum, yummy, really, really good. I think this is a strong flavor. Mm, it's really good for, um, for, for trying these new ingredients. If you've never allowed your palate to really understand or, or value that bitter um, flavor. It's one of those really important um, flavor profiles that especially as Americans, we often miss. It's not even a part of our everyday life and our everyday diet at all. So radicchio is one of those things. Remember that bitter quality is good. It's jam packed with those phytochemicals. Those are all antioxidants. It's fantastic. Uh, I yesterday posted on the uh, video from yesterday, the CSA Farm Fresh to You Farm Back Box link. If you want that, we'll post it again here. That's where I've gotten all of our produce for this week. Thank you so much, Farm Fresh to You. It's been really fun to kind of see what comes in our next box. We get a whole new box starting tomorrow. Very excited. Um, and consider, please, coming into our Plant-Based Made Easy online cooking club. It's not a program. It's a club. It's a really good, fun opportunity to, to come together, to be together in community with people that want to be healthy. These are plant-curious people. These might be people that are already vegan, that are vegetarian, that are already plant-based, but want to learn a little bit more. So if you're at home thinking, wow, what am I going to do for the month of July? July is upon us already. Ready. How am I going to make healthy, easy, and affordable recipes for my family? I've got you covered. I've del deliberately created an amazing curriculum of recipes. Uh, this this month, we're doing so much with seasonal summertime produce. Um, I'm changing the menu every single month too. So it's an opportunity for you guys to stay in the club with a monthly membership and just enjoy being in the community with people. We meet every Monday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific and we actually cook something together and then I get you set up for success for the rest of the week, as well as give you weekly grocery lists, recipes, and all the plant-based education and nutrition education pretty much you could ever imagine. So we're gonna make it super fun, you guys. Thank you so much for coming and for being a part of today's lesson. Tomorrow we have a really fun recipe on board. I'm gonna be talking about Swiss chard, the mighty rainbow vegetable. I've got some rainbow Swiss chard. We're gonna make Italian Swiss chard patties, one of my all-time favorite foods, really, really yummy. It's kind of like an appetizer. It goes great with dips and things like that. So it's gonna carry you into the holiday weekend, I think, really, really perfectly. Thank you again. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay hydrated. It's very hot outside. And if I don't see you tomorrow, go out there, have a wonderful, safe holiday weekend. Make it magical. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.